friends from across the country are cooking along with me today. We are making my Mediterranean salmon with feta pickle from my new cookbook. How's everybody doing so far? Nailing it. Oh my gosh, I love a thumbs up. We're doing great. All right, are you ready to get this salmon in the oven? Nice, okay, perfect. Everyone loves a morning salmon. It's always a good thing. <laughs> All right, so my salmon's been marinating for about 15 minutes now, and now I wanna get it out of that marinade. So I've got some paper towel here, and I'm just gonna start drying this off. I'm gonna put a little bit of oil down onto my pan as well, just to get a little bit of crispiness there. And while I get drying this baby off, I think we've got a question, don't we, from uh, Michelle? Hi, Mary. It's so Hi. great to be cooking with you this morning. Oh my gosh, Michelle, you look beautiful in that shirt. I love it. Thanks. It's a bit of um, sunshine on a dreary day. Oh, whereabouts are you located, Michelle? In Vancouver. It's oh. a bit rainy. R R Classic Vancouver, hey? Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. What's your question? Well, I've been doing a lot of cooking during the pandemic, mm. and every time I cook salmon, um, I notice a lot of white stuff coming out onto the surface, and I'm wondering, is there a way to prevent that? Totally. So what that white stuff is, is actually the protein cooking out of the fish and a little bit of the fat. Um, it's similar to, you know when you cook a, like an egg, like the egg white goes harder and white? It's a similar thing to that. So basically what's happening there is you are lightly, I'm going to call it... Um, over caramelizing your fish. You're lightly overcooking, which isn't the bad thing in, at all. But what I like to do is I like to keep my salmon, I like to start checking on it a little bit earlier. Um, and what I do to figure out if my salmon is done is I get a fork, just a plain old fork, stick it into the middle of the fish or your filet that you're eating and give it a little bit of a twist. If it flakes, it's done. It's tricky because sometimes you want, if you're used to cooking chicken and things like that, you're used to kind of cooking it for a little bit longer, but salmon cooks nice and quick. Okay, so the key is not to overcook it. Yes, but at the same time, I'm not gonna lie, I don't mind an overcooked piece of salmon, so that would be good to me. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. Amazing, thank you so, so much. <laughs> Amazing. Well, this salmon is nice and dried off. I'm gonna drizzle the top with a little bit more oil. And now this baby needs to go into my 400 degree oven, nice and hot, for about 15 to 18 minutes. I'm doing a bigger piece, so I'm gonna go 18, but if you're doing little pieces, I'd stick with 15. At the end, pop the broiler on for about a minute or two for a little bit of color, and you are good to go. All right, that salmon's gonna do its thing, and now it's time for a cocktail. So, to keep this celebration going, I think we should have something delicious in a glass. Please welcome someone who's also celebrating a new book, Evelyn Chick. Hi, hi, hi. Evelyn, hello. First off, hubba hubba. I am so excited about your first cookbook, baby. Thank you. It is so beautiful. For the love of cocktails, it's absolutely stunning. Thank you so much. How are you feeling? You feeling good about it? You feeling... Oh, I you, feel great. Good. I feel like I've put a lot of my life into this book mm -hmm. and now it's out to the world. Yes. The bird has flown. Exactly. From the nest. Yes. It's amazing. Honestly, it's a week old now. You're feeling great? Feeling great. Honestly, so huge congratulations. And you're going to make you. um, a couple celebratory cocktails for us, aren't you? Yes, I am. So we're celebrating two book babies, which is wonderful. <laughs> Look at us go. Yeah. Uh, so this whole project actually started during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And you know, I started doing virtual cocktail classes. I've been in the hospitality industry for 17 years. Wow. And yeah. the consensus is people are afraid to pick up a shaker and make something. You know, you can read a food recipe, you can, you can make really delicious salmon, mm -hmm. you can also do that with cocktails. Mm -hmm. So this book is really a pick up and shake up kind of book. I love so, that. Recipes for any occasion mm -hmm. and obviously celebration today. Amazing. Okay, yes. what are we starting with? So we're starting with something called the Green Awakening. So during Ooh. the pandemic, I was like trimming down, you know, the heads and the tips of like my cucumber waist, trying to do waste-based things to yes. like save on something. Mm -hmm. So this cocktail is celebration of um, anything that we want to toss out, but like it's actually going to be really beautiful, reincarnated. So like a waste-based cocktail. Yes, exactly. We're quoting that term right I here. like that. I, was, I could also call it trash cocktail, but I won't do that because I, I love trash. <laughs> yeah, it's all the little odds and ends. Right. Yes. So this is based of a cucumber cordial that I've made, which is just essentially cucumber juice that's juiced from the heads and tips mm -hmm. and blended with some sugar and lime zest. Oh, it's good gosh. with just soda as well. That sounds so yeah, good. And the really color delicious. is out of control. So vibrant. And, and you made that it. out of like stuff that would scraps. go into scraps. Exactly. Amazing. Yeah. So what we're going to do with this cocktail, first we're going to add some um, sake. So mm -hmm. sake is a lower um, ABV Japanese rice wine. Mm -hmm. And then a little bit of gin for some aromatics. 
And then we're gonna add the uh, nice cucumber cordial for some zest and some really refreshing notes. That looks beautiful. Yes, and a little bit of lime. And this is gonna come out like really green and lovely. Okay? I love that. So the lime juice is gonna really kind of dial up the citrus component. So we're gonna shake it up. So really easy, the cookbook also tells you like how to shake properly, so this is the key. Evelyn, anytime you make a cocktail, you look so cool. I do not look this cool. You can do that <laughs> too, I promise, after you read the book. Okay, so we're just gonna strain it in these nice coupe glasses. And you know what, just because you're drinking at home doesn't mean you have to sacrifice beauty, right? That is beautiful. Okay, so this is a green awakening. Last but not least, um, I have a little absinthe here. This is completely optional, but it's just to dial up that like fennel and anise kind of elements. So oh, there you go. That was beautiful. Nice little cucumber garnish. This looks fancy, but there's a chapter called Easy Peasy Fancy Garnishes. You can totally do this. This well. is amazing. There there's a whole chapter, on garnish. Whole chapter on garnish. Cheers. 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 Let's give it a sip. Do you like it? Okay. <laughs> The absinthe, that little bit of that licorice -y kind of yeah. fennel note. Ooh. You just need a little whisper. Oh my sometimes. gosh, I don't want to put that down, but I feel Love like we got that. a couple more cocktails. Yes, on the we deck. do. Okay, what are we doing next? Okay, so the next one is a celebration of whiskey. It's one of the spirits that really got me into cocktails. Mm -hmm. The first time I visited Hiram Walker Distillery in Detroit, it showed me the vast sort of um, flavor notes that are whiskey, like. Winter spice, baking spice, yeah. orange, vanilla, so beautiful. And I love the nuttiness that it brings. So mm -hmm. this is called a nutty doctor, Ooh, uh, oh. a tribute to the whiskey maker. So first we're gonna throw some uh, Canadian rye in a shaker tin. That was my Nana's drink of choice. There you go. Yep, <laughs> that's the end of list. It's, yeah. so, it's really, really nice yeah. once you know how to Work, work with, with it, it yes. 100%. And then we're gonna do a coconut infused Amontillado sherry. So sherries are something that like sits in the grandmother's like cabinet. And you're like, 100%. why is this so difficult to use? But it actually adds another layer of nuttiness to it. Um, a little is bit of lemon juice. Yes, so okay. it's actually a wine that's fortified. Fortified oh. just means that it is um, stops fermentation mm -hmm. um, with a, a spirit that allows for it to age in a barrel or not in a barrel. Um, and it's really lovely to add some like nutty and like really beautiful notes. That's to amazing. Okay, so the lemon juice in there too? Yes, and then we have a cashew uh, syrup called a cashew orjat. So it's literally just cashew milk blended with sugar, a little bit of rose water. Oh. So if you smell it, it adds some florality to the oh. drink. Again, these are all in the cookbook and it's really easy to make. And, and like all of the mixes yeah, too. Yeah, all of amazing. the mixes. And you know, everyone's so afraid of making syrups. It's literally just throwing things in a blender or cooking things with water. That's, That's perfect. It. I love yes. that you're demystifying it. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. So a couple drops of uh, bitters. And you can pick your own bitter adventure as well. Yeah. This one I use has like black pepper and lime leaf to it. Ooh. So a lot of complex flavors. And this one I'm just gonna like do a shake and dump because it's oh. supposed to be like a nice like tropical vibes oh um, kind of drink called the Nutty Doctor. We're gonna get some nuttiness in here. A little bit of mint. There oh my go. gosh. Well, cheers, cheers to you. Oh my gosh. Look at the layers though. I have like different flavors and I'm just dumping things in, you know? <laughs> This is like a baked good. Right. Oh my gosh. This is, it's, oh my, I could, okay, cool. We got it. God, yeah. yeah. That is so good. Yes, and infusions are actually very, very easy to do. Mm -hmm. Most of it is essentially extracting flavor mm -hmm. from a singular ingredient mm -hmm. with alcohol. Amazing. Or without alcohol, because there's a whole chapter that is non-alcoholic as well. You got cocktails in here too? I got you. Oh my gosh, so what, wait, what are we moving on to here now? Not non-alcoholic, okay. but you can very easily make this non-alcoholic mm -hmm. by eliminating um, the tequila and then using non-alcoholic red wine. Oh, right on. So okay. let's move on to the last drink because yeah. this is a celebration of friends. Mm -hmm. And this is what this is all about, right? Yes. Okay, so this recipe is called Spiceberry Beret. It's inspired by Prince, and obviously yeah. it's like <laughs> adventurous take on everything, mm -hmm. but it's also inspired by my mom. She used to uh, use red wine that's mm -hmm. like almost off, and she would boil it with some cinnamon and orange and make a sangria out of it. Oh. And she would throw different things in it and at a young age, I didn't know that was such a genius idea. Yeah. So this is sort of like a tribute to her. And again, using something up that you might have you just might tossed. You might have thrown out. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Okay, so what are we doing here? Okay, so first we have this little punch bowl, very, very festive. Mm -hmm. um, I usually pull it out in the fall. Mm -hmm. um, great for like Thanksgiving aperitivo kind of style. Mm -hmm. So I have some berries, cinnamon sticks, and orange peels soaking in tequila. So you can just like okay. toss it in there while you're cooking your Thanksgiving dinner. Amazing. Right? Love that. And then right before your guests arrive, what you're going to throw in is very, very easy. Here's some agave syrup, you can uh, buy it in store. Mm -hmm. And what I've done is just toss some vanilla beans in it. Mm -hmm. So it brings up these like really nice flavors. Beautiful. So I'm just gonna pour it right in there. And some pineapple juice that's um, cut with a little bit of lime. 
Oh. So give it that nice, like, zesty, tropical Tart. feeling to mm -hmm. it. And then some spent red wine. This is red wine that you're like, okay, I, like, don't want to toss it out yet. What should I do with yeah. it? Yeah. Is it, is it cooking wine now or is it? No, it's drinking no, wine No, it's still. drinking yeah. wine still. Yeah. <laughs> and if you like uh, to elongate it with a little bit of bubbly, you can mm -hmm. do some soda, just a little splash. <gasps> and all you have to do is mix it up. And now we have like the perfect little punch that you really did not much to it. No. <laughs> to serve to your guests. But honestly, and I love a punch. We were talking about earlier, summer yeah. is for like pitchers, pitchers of cocktails. Punch bowls are for the fall. Yes, exactly. Yes. Okay, right. so we grab a little cup there. Right. I have one as well. Now, I don't May know. If, I? Oh, please do. Okay. I don't know if everyone saw, but the, um, the, the amount of tequila hanging out in the bottom of this bowl was a delight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it wasn't that much. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Well, okay. cheers. cheers. Cheers to you. Cheers to your new Thank book, baby. You. Congratulations. Yes. Oh, my. Oh, my gosh. That vanilla and the, the cinnamon. The vanilla. Oh. oh, my gosh. Evelyn, you're a wizard. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much. Well, thanks to Evelyn. You are all going home with a copy of her new Yay. book, baby. Hey, Mary here. What did you think? Drop your comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more of the good stuff.